certainly. Right, so the plan for today, um, we are going to do three short writing exercises with you um, and then there'll be a five to ten minute break, which will be something like 11.50. We're not going to be too rigid about it, but it's always nice to know when that's going to happen. Um, and then for the last half hour, we're going to have a slightly longer writing exercise. So those of you who've done this before will be used to this format. Um, and then before we finish, there'll be a bit, bit of a sum up um, of what we've talked to you about today and the plans for the next step. So it should finish at 12.30, ideally on the dot. Um, and just a little bit um, about what we mean about nature writing. So if you ask nature writers what nature writing is, if you ask 10, you'd get 10 different definitions, I think is inevitable. Um, but when we're talking about nature writing today, we mean everything from creative nonfiction or fiction, prose or poetry. Um, it's about the natural world in all its elements and often about the writer's place in it. Um, so it can be, be a lot of very different things. So we're not, there's no rules about what it should be. Um, and that's important, I think, for you to think about today. Um, so we're going to get you writing as quickly as possible. Um, so this is one of Rebecca's beautiful photographs. Um, some writers have a knack of finding a new way of seeing and fresh words to convey the natural world. So the warm up exercise that we're going to do for five minutes, please could you list everything that comes to mind when you look at this photo? And I mean list, so we're not talking necessarily full sentences. It's just about a total brain dump. So descriptive things, thoughts, things that it makes you think of, reminds you of, memories. Just get it all down. Don't edit it as you go along to a complete brain dump um, and off you go. You've got about five minutes.
So you've got about a minute to go. Okay, so if you weren't already feeling wintry when you came on the call, I'm sure you are now. <laughs> um, there's nothing like Scottish winter, is there? So those, if you've ever experienced it, was, um, we just don't do it so well in England, I don't think. Um, wonderful. So at that point, I'm going to pass you over to um, Rebecca for the next section. Thank you very much. So um, I'm just going to start with reading out some extracts. Um, I'm definitely not putting myself in the same league as Nan Shepherd. Let me just put that out there first. But um, for those who don't know, Nan Shepherd was a Scottish writer um, best known for her mountain memoir called The Living Mountain, which was based on her experiences as a hill walker. Um, so I'm just going to read these two pieces out to you. The first one um, I wrote when I first arrived in Scotland, um, and it was just, just on the cusp of winter. Um, so... Waves come thundering towards land, smothering the beach and slapping against the rocks in protest. The sky is a smudge of blues with faint threads of lemon yellow. Lounging along the horizon are mountains diluted by distance, their peaks brushed over with snow. The cold fills my lungs in icy gulps. I turn to face north and gaze at yawning ocean that will eventually reach Iceland, Greenland and the top of the world. Watching row after rotatory row of froth surging towards me is hypnotic and the view slips out of focus as my mind wanders. Winter waits in the wings. And this is a piece from Nan Shepherd's book. An interplay between two movements and simultaneous action, the freezing of frost and the running of water. Sometimes a third force, the blowing of wind, complicates the form still further. The ice may be crystal clear, but more probably is translucent, crumpled, crackled or bubbled where the water runs thinly over a line of stones right across the bed and freezes in crinkled green cascades of ice. Then a dam forms further up of half frozen slush, solid at its margins, foliated with the edges all separate like untrimmed handmade paper and each edge a vivid green. They look unreal in this world of wayward undulations, too regular as though man had made them. So I chose these two pieces because the first one that I wrote is sort of captures winter at the large scale. So it stretches across the sea to the mountains and even further beyond. So I was trying to sort of capture a sense of that landscape, sort of huge, vast scale. Um, but then Nan Shepherds, in contrast, is focusing on a really tiny part of winter in amazing detail. Um, so she's describing a single and quite specific element of her surroundings, but with sort of really interesting verbs and and, and really nice metaphors. Um, so I just wanted to say that there's benefits to using both approaches because you can ground the reader in the place initially um, and then reveal that place in more detail. And it just gives the sort of the big picture and then honing in on what you're actually experiencing. There's, there's, it's quite nice to do sort of both things. So uh, yeah, if we move on to slide five. So for the next activity, I just want you to think back to the pre-workshop activity you did. Um, but if you haven't um, done that, then it's okay. Just you can use this photo here as some inspiration if you like. Um, so I'd just like you to write for five minutes at that big landscape scale, like I did in my piece. Um, and then five minutes about sort of the small and sort of intricate details like Nan did in her piece. Um, so for this exercise, we're asking you not to appear in it yourself. Um, this isn't a case of one way being right over the other way. It's just because um, Nan appears, doesn't appear in hers, but I do in mine. Um, but we're just encouraging you to be aware of when you are and when you aren't present in your writing, just so you're conscious of it as a writing tool. It's quite handy to know sort of when you are in it and when you aren't. Um, so if you're struggling for the details, um, just 
think about the other senses so often we sort of think about what we look at and what we're seeing mostly um but sounds and smells and textures can really sort of bring a piece alive um, and make it even more engaging so yeah if we just so spend 10 minutes doing that that would be great
You have a couple of minutes left. Okay, so that's uh, 10 minutes up, so I'll hand you back to... Okay, so for our third exercise, um, I'd like you to just look at those sentences you just written, um, but this time I would like you to write yourself into them. Um, so if you think about how you're you're physically interacting with your surroundings so how does winter make you feel and um, what memories does it trigger and um, does the landscape you're in remind you of something else that you've experienced before um, so this can be as personal as you like um, so just talk just as if you were explaining to somebody that wasn't there how you were feeling at the time and what you were experiencing so using the the detail that we've just written but now it, putting ourselves into that place. So we're not an objective observer, we're interacting and we're engaging. Um, so if we spend another 10 minutes doing that, if you've got any questions, just pop them in the chat.
You've got a couple of minutes to go for this exercise. Okay. So that's the um, 10 minutes of exercise three. Our first piece in the chat, that's exciting. <laughs> um, let me just move on to the next slide. So you can have a bit of a breather. And, and listen to Rebecca's dulcet tones. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. So yeah, before we go on a break, we're just going to look at um, a few examples of thumbnail nature. So I'm sure a lot of you that have been on the previous workshops are aware of this. Now, this is Amanda's amazing idea. Um, so the first one was written by um, Amina Roji, who hosted one of the previous workshops with, with Amanda. Um, so September is when the snoke bush begins its slow burn, turning with the season from bruise blue purple to orange, yellow, green, red, black, from smoke to fire, shaped like an explosion. Bright pink ridges mark the bones of velvet soft leaves, each one gradually being painted by an invisible artist. And this one's mine. Peppermint, turquoise, glashamint white, wine gum black, sea glass transforms on its journey from earth to water, Foraged from all over Scotland, my jar full of frosty faces soothes me. I collect them so I can touch something moulded by the sea wherever I am. It's nature's tangible influence. And here's one from Amanda. A woman is walking in front of me on Peckham Rye with a four-year-old. He's looking at something in his hand, a conker in its prickly case. Perhaps it's food for fairies or el an elves, mum says. The boy frowns at the conker. No, mummy, they're for animals. Busted. So... Obviously, with these, they're very brief, um, and that's quite a challenge for um, a writer because you don't have the luxury of those lengthy explanations, and you need to really express your subject concisely while still being engaging and, and interesting and creative. Um, so these small pieces can include any or all of the elements we've looked at so far. So they can be at that big landscape scale, they can be at a really specific detail scale, um, and you can involve yourself or you can talk objectively, it's all fine. Um, but it has to be really concise and to the point um, while still being engaging. Um, again, don't just rely on sights, use the other senses, um, particularly textures are quite fun to get into the nitty gritty of, especially at that small detail scale. Um, and if you're squeezing in, you know, too many words, then check for repetition. And um, sometimes we write the way more than we need to. So have a look at how many times you're writing things like that um, and remove any unnecessary words. So maybe change um, an adjective for a more sort of engaging verb instead. So some words sort of don't really need to be there if you substitute them for a stronger verb um, or something like that. 
um, and again, replace sort of slightly longer phrases with more concise ones um, and really try and put your point across in a really concise way. Um, so that's just something to think about um, just before we head into our break and then when we come back, we'll have a go at that ourselves. Fantastic. So um, what would be, we have a little bit of time, so what would be really nice would be to see some of the things you've been writing already. So if you have a look back over the first three exercises, do please share on the chat phrases, sentences, ideas that you're, you've, you're particularly pleased with. We'd love to read them and I'm sure everybody else would too. Um, and it's just a way that we can get a bit of interaction. It's obviously difficult when you have um, 53 people on a, at a workshop, can't really be interactive, but this is our chance to see what you've been doing. And thanks for everybody who has been chatting a little bit. Um, so um, yeah, it'd be great to see that. And um, one thing I was gonna say, I thought was quite interesting about the th these three thumbnail nature, something they have in common is, is that they almost, they go somewhere. So as you get to the end of the thumbnail nature piece, um, it's it's making a point of some sort. They don't, and thumbnail nature doesn't have to be like that, but it is a nice way of making a kind of little mini story out of 50 words. Um, so that's also something perhaps to think about for after the break. So just for the moment, um, please get something on the chat. We can have a, Rebecca and I'll have a read through. Um, and um, then we'll have a break and we'll start again at, I think we'll make it five to 12, um, so we'll be back online then. So in the meantime, I'm going to switch off my video and, and mute um, so that you've got peace and quiet and no distractions. So see you again at 5 to 12.
so hopefully you're all back some more faces are popping up so I know at least some of you are here and uh, I hope you did get a chance to get away from the screen I know it's hard to um, it's hard to do that when you're in the middle of a piece of writing so um, before we start the final exercise um, I'm just going to ask Rebecca and I know this is going to be incredibly difficult but whether you could pick out two or three things or whatever however many you want to pick out from the chat just to share with everybody would be great yeah well I'm certainly spot for choice um I've just seen an iced cake of a morning and that's probably my favorite phrase that I've ever read like that's that's just winter isn't it like that's that's amazing love that um wow yeah, there is lots here that I could read. Where's, oh, thing is you see one and then it gets lost in everyone else's. It's amazing that there's so many. Um, uh, where are we? Fresh frosty tufts from Debbie Rolls. That's lovely. Fresh frosty, I like the, the Fs. Um, whisper of nearby willows beautiful opal sky opal that's a really unusual color to use but yeah that's exactly what it looks like that's really lovely from nina there um it's interesting that a lot of you write in um present tense because i i really i use past most of the time but yeah a lot of people use use present it's interesting that we have different approaches to to how we sort of are in a moment or reflecting on a moment um, yeah, beautiful the century old trees sway losing leaves with every stroke that's lovely too wow yeah it's lovely that you're all affected so differently by the same um the same season so shall we rebecca shall i move on yeah but i would encourage all of you if you <laughs> If you need some inspiration, do go back and read some other people's work because like, sometimes that can really help trigger mm. ideas. Um, so um, we've introduced you to the concept of Thumbna Nature, if that's new for you. Um, so the final exercise is to pull together <clears throat> everything that we've done today so far. Excuse me. <coughs> um, and to create a piece of thumbnail nature so the absolute and I, it's going to sound pedantic the absolute rule is that it mustn't be more than 50 words and i know in the past we've had people who've added titles as well and that's fine but that needs to be included in the 50 words um so it's on the theme of song of ice and footprints the theme of this workshop and it, which feels highly appropriate both for being winter but also in the run up to tuesday's winter solstice for those of you who are in the same hemisphere that we are um, and feel free to magpie bits from what you've been doing already this morning so repurpose them change them do whatever you like with them as long as it fits with that theme and exactly as Rebecca said, some people like to write in the past tense, some people like to write in the present tense. You could, if you're not sure, try both and see what works for the piece of writing you're doing. Um, think about the idea of your, it might be a tiny amount of words in the overall scheme of things, but it can, there can still be a whole story in there. People write stories in six words, so um, it doesn't limit what you can do. It doesn't just need to be descriptive, although it could be. Um, but in terms of process, particularly for those of you who are new to this sort of um, creative writing, I would really encourage you to do your first draft. Um, and as I said, feel free to repurpose. Read that aloud. Edit, polish it, read it aloud again and repeat that process. You've only got 50 words, so you want every single word to count. What you don't want is to lose some of your description because over here you've got unnecessary words. And I think a key thing, because the idea of thumbnail nature came from me reading tweets by people like fabulous nature writers like Nicola Chester, who 
if you haven't seen her tweets and you are on Twitter, really worth following. Um, you, you're, you can do whatever you like with punctuation. You can do you can put capital letters, you can um, play with spelling. There's no rules. This is not about creating an acceptable form of literature. It's about being playful, creative and taking it however you want and using it however you want. So what I'm trying to open up to you is you can make this anything as long as it's on the theme and as long as it's no more than 50 words. So hopefully that's not too um, scary prospect. <laughs> um, but it would be fantastic if you could work on that now. So you've got a little bit longer for this one. And that is to allow that reading aloud. So, and bear in mind, because I can see some of you, I'm going to know if you're reading aloud. Paul, I'm watching you. <laughs> so it'll be obvious to me if people aren't reading aloud anyway. And I know it's one of those things, if you've not done it before, it feels weird, but it really is helpful for making your writing slick um, and making sure that you don't have any unnecessary words in there. So I'm going to stop talking now because that's not what you need me to be doing. Um, I'm going to be quiet. Um, and so you've got until 12.22 to work on this. Um, and uh, very excited to see what you come up with. Off you go.
You've got a couple of minutes to go. Okay, you've clearly been doing fantastic things. I've been reading them and it's fun. It's wonderful to see the complete range and different approaches people take. So it's been a total pleasure reading all of that. And um, before we finish off, just wanted to do a bit of a recap. Um, so some of these things, those of you who come to my, have been to my nature writing workshops before will some of this will be very familiar because I drone on about it every time that we meet. Um, but tips for, com write it for, for producing compelling nature writing. I would really encourage you to always root your writing in the moment of experiencing nature using all your senses. Even if you then use that as a springboard to move somewhere else, it's a really good starting point. And it's also for um, those of us who um, you know write for a living, one of the you, know, you, you have days where you don't even know where to start and sometimes I find just getting out in my local woods or going for a walk in the park and just being there with nature is just enough to unblock that so I would really encourage that. Um, we talked today and um, about writing at different scales and I thought Rebecca did a fantastic um, description of and you know, sort of endorsement of those two different approaches so either big landscape um, homing in on detail and then all the other possibilities in between that. So um, it's just a way of getting you to look at the natural world um, through lots of different lenses. Um, some of you I know came and did a in-person nature writing workshop with me where we used hand lenses. Um, so you can really get close in and, um, and that's another way of doing the detail. A, a little hand lens like jewellers use cost about a fiver um, and that can make a huge difference to how you see natural objects. And then, then the final thing, which is possibly the most important out of all of them, is that it's probably a good balance in your writing is to spend about a third of your time actually writing and then two thirds editing and polishing it. And I know when I first started writing, um, I didn't do nearly enough of the editing and polishing. And then it's excruciating when people come back and point out all the things that you missed. Um, so it's really, really valuable to allow lots of time for the editing and polishing. So, what next? Well, if you would like your piece of thumbnail nature, your 50 words on the subject of song, of ice and footprints to be considered for an online anthology, the anthology would be published on the London Wildlife Trust blog because they are my partner in um, a nature writing residency I'm currently doing in the Great North Wood. 
um, then please could you send your final polished version um, to my email address which is written there um, I've given you till midnight tomorrow the reason for that is for some of you I know it's you, you like to come back to your writing the next day and have a little think about it and read it again so um, if you feel that having done this session you've produced the absolute 100% best piece of nature writing ever then don't by by all means send it straight away but um, to allow you a little bit of time yes you've got until midnight tomorrow and you know what's quite exciting is some people do send it at a minute to midnight which I love it's magical get up the next day and I see what time they've arrived um, but yeah so um, it would be fantastic for any of you who'd like your work to be considered in that anthology um, and um, just a sort of um, just a forewarning um, forewarning that's not the right word but um, to give you a bit of notice um, I'm in the process of organizing um, a reading event, an online reading event, which will be on Saturday the 29th of January. Um, and I will put out a call for submissions for that reading event quite soon. So every, anybody who's attended one of my workshops will be invited to submit to a particular specification for that. And I'm hoping to get those out, um, or that out to you all next week. And it would be lovely if some of you felt like um, submitting to that too. It would involve you being available on the 29th, which is partly why I'm telling you now, um, so that you could read, if you were selected, you could read your bit of writing. And the fabulous Elle Rhodes, who I certainly was on here earlier, and I hope she still is, um, has very kindly agreed to help co-host that with um, another good friend of mine, Vanessa Wright. So um, we're planning to have a lovely time. It will be a relaxed evening. So do stick that in your diaries. And hopefully, even if you your work isn't selected, you might be persuaded to come and listen and um, enjoy everybody else's writing. So that's all from us. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for coming. It's lovely to see so many familiar faces and also so many new people, which is very exciting. Um, it's the, this is the biggest group we've had to date. Um, so we've had various points in the call, we've had 53 people writing away busily. Um, and of course, fantastic big thanks to Rebecca, who's been a total star and a joy to work with. We've had a lovely time. Um, and um, I don't know if you wanted to just say anything, Rebecca. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you to Amanda for inviting me in the first place. Um, winter, this has been in the in the works for a while because winter is my favourite season. But at the time, I think you approached me way earlier in the year, didn't you? So it was yeah, nice to have something to look forward to um, just before Christmas. So yeah, I'm hoping everyone's... I've seen some lovely comments. Thank you, everyone. But yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed it and have been inspired. Um, and yeah, getting getting in the wintry mood right before solstice, I thought was a lovely idea. So yeah, thank you, everyone. Really so have a fantastic solstice on Tuesday. Um, try and mark it in some nature way. That's always a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. And um, looking forward to seeing some of you in the new year. Brilliant. Thank you very much.